All right, guys, are y'all ready? All right, today I need your help. Okay, I need your help. We have a mystery person that we're going to talk about. Now, I'm going to give you some clues, and I don't want you to give it away before I actually tell you what it is, okay? So keep it to yourself. Don't yell it out. All right, the first thing, I have a letter, what? What is this? Elf. Elf. All right. I need Harrison. Come up and hold my elf for me. Hold it real tall where we can see it. All right, listen, guys. Elf is for forgiving. Even when we disobey or do something wrong, this mystery person is willing to forgive us. All right, now I need this letter. A, A, A. Lulu, come up and hold the A for me, real big and tall, right beside the F. <laughs> A is for attentive, attentive. When we need someone to talk to, this person is willing to listen to what we have to say. They give us their attention. All right, the next letter, what is this? T, T. All right, Callie, come and hold my T up. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, listen. T is for teacher. This person, this mystery person, teaches us the most important lessons of our life. He teaches us, listen to me, he teaches us right from wrong. He teaches us by example and how to love one another. Now, if you know who it is, don't give it up, okay? All right, my next letter is H, H, H. Who wants to hold this letter up? All right, Carson, come up and hold H. H is for helpful. Helpful. This person helps us to make the important decisions we face each day. He may offer advice, or he may just be a good listener, but he is always there to help us. So H stands for helpful. All right. What is this next letter? E. 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 All right. You want to come and hold the E for me? All right, E is for energetic, lots of energy. No matter how tired he is, this person always seems to find the energy to do things with us or for us. All right, my last letter. Don't yell it out yet. I know you probably guess it by now, but what is this? R. All right, Dad, let's hold my R. Go hold, hold it by that little girl in the yellow. I want to see these letters. Let me see them. F-A-T-H-E-R. Okay, R is for ready. This person is always ready to reach out and love to us. He is ready to do whatever we need. Now listen, everybody. Who do you think our mystery person is? Father. Father. Is that right? Father. Good. And you, do you know what today is? Today is Father's Day, and so you should use this day to say thank you to our dads for all the hard work they do to keep our family going. All right, now, so what do you need to do when you see your father? Thank you. That's right, and guess what, guys? We also have another father. Do you know who that is? God. God is our father, too. And then although we can't see him, he is real. He knows us, he watches over us, and he loves us so much, doesn't he? All right, so we're going to say a little prayer. So I want you to bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Lord, we thank you for our fathers. Help us this day to show our love and appreciation to our fathers, and may we always remember to thank you, our Heavenly Father.
Amen. All right, now what I'm going to do, I want you to listen real closely. I'm going to ask all of our dads if you'll stand. Well, if our dads stand this morning, granddads, dads. All right. And now, as we go back to our seat this morning, can y'all do this? Do y'all know what this is? This is a hug. See this? All right, as you go back to your seats, I want you to look at all of our dads and give them this kind of hug right here. Okay? And then get to your dad and give him a great big hug. All right, so let's quietly walk back to our seat. If you have a sign, just lay it right here. Good job, guys. Good job. Well, good morning. Happy Father's Day. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, we're glad that you are here today. Uh, so if you would, if we are ready. Because this is fixing to get really good here, real quick. <laughs> so if you would stand, we're going to start with victory in Jesus. Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever He sought me and bought me With his redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew him And all my love is due Oh, 
shout about today and aren't you glad that you're here we've had some folks that have been here ever since what 8 30 eating donuts and drinking coffee uh, then we've had a wonderful Sunday school lesson and now we've come for the Sunday morning worship service we welcome you into our service today uh, you may be seated for just a minute if you'd like okay Corinth is more than just a church. It is a family of believers made up of many individual families. At the head of each individual family is a God-appointed head, Father, the Dad. Dear Dad, we appreciate your faithfulness and recognize and honor you on this special day. I was going to say let's have a hand clap of praise for all the dads that are here today, but we did that when the kids were up here and enthusiastically, but let's do it anyhow because I got it rolled down here, all right? We recognize every single one. It's an honor to be a dad. It's an honor to have a family. I was going to give Brother Jerry and his family the recognition of coming to Fathers to be here today because they, they actually live in California. What time? They're not in Tennessee. But my other son came all the way from Washington State, Jason Nichols. I noticed the other day on Corin Facebook page, Somebody had put a picture. Melissa put a picture of Brother Don and Miss Rebecca at the front door. And under that was a caption that caught my heart. It was from Jason. He said, I love this couple. They have raised me. So he's my, he's my other son. We're glad you're here today, Jason. Jason is, a, uh, is in law enforcement in Washington State. We appreciate him. I wonder if there's any other law enforcement officers or retired or ex policemen or law enforcement officers here today. Anybody besides Jason in the field of law enforcement? I want to tell you what, folks, whoever you are, we, we, we take our hats off to you. You've been through some trying times, but be assured that Corinth Baptist Church and this church family has you in our prayers. We appreciate every day that you get up, and you put on the uniform, and you go out to protect the rest of us. We appreciate you from the depths of our heart. So let's give not only a round of applause for the one that we have here today, but for all of those who serve in this country in defense of the freedoms that we enjoy today. And included in that, let's include our military. We've got several military personnel in our church today. We recognize you as well. Let's give a hand clap of praise to those who protect our lives and our property. Amen. Amen, brother. Now to the announcements. Uh, thank you for the prayers for Brother Scott King. He survived his surgery real good. It was a great success last Monday. He is at home recovering. Uh, he is making real good progress, and I'm sure that he'll be back with us in a short time. But we appreciate Brother Scott. We miss him, but we're grateful for your prayers on his behalf and the success of the surgery, and, and we know God is still in control of everything. We announced last week that we would have a brief business meeting today after the, a five-minute break at the end of the service. We haven't had a business meeting in three months due to the 
crisis that we've been going through, so we'll dismiss, have our amen, and whatever. And after that, about five-minute break. And for those of you who want to stay for the business meeting, you'll have an opportunity to do that. It is the first one we've had in three months, but we've got everything categorized and got a brief format of everything, so it shouldn't take very long. I uh, want to recognize our Corinth kids uh, in the spotlight today. We've got Anna Pafford. Anna likes to swim, play games, ride her bike, and cook. She is the daughter of Evan Pafford and Lindsay Pafford. Her group, proud grandparents are Kenny and Suzanne Pratt. Beautiful picture of a beautiful London young lady. Spotlight in the Corinth kids today. We're proud of all these young folks in our church. Uh, regarding our offering, uh, due to the COVID-19, we're still using offering buckets. Amen. Uh, they are at the entrance and they are at the exit, and uh, you can, or, or, or you can mail your tithes and offerings to Corinth Baptist Church, care of Tammy White, 1885 Iron Hill Road, Parsons, Tennessee. Our memory verse for this time of crisis has been Second Chronicles 7:14. It is God's formula for the recovery of our nation. The Lord God made this promise. He said, If my people which are called by name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn in their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. We'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And brother, we need the healing of God's hand upon this nation of ours. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know one thing. We know who holds tomorrow. And the Lord who holds tomorrow definitely holds our hand. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you today for every dad, every family, every home that's represented here today, Lord. And we realize, Lord, that you're in control of everything. There's nothing that happens that surprises you, Lord. We also understand that you make provision for our needs well in advance, Lord, that we don't have to worry about it. You give us the instruction how to live. Everything that we need to know is contained in the pages of your eternal word, Lord. You instruct us how to raise our families, how to lead our families, and how to be the men of faith of our generation. And so, God, I pray today that you will lay this challenge upon every heart that's present, Lord, that we will be the men and women of faith of this generation that will carry on the work of God in this community and in our world and around the world. And Lord, these are times when our nation needs healing, Lord. We believe that the majority of people in this nation are righteous, God-fearing, people who respect law and order and decency, who are honest and genuine, but God, Satan has blinded the minds and the hearts and the lives of so many. And God, we pray that somehow that we could have a day of national revival in America, that we could really have a day, Lord, when we come back to the very basics upon which this nation has been founded. Lord, we thank you today for the privilege that we still have to assemble ourselves and to be here in prayer and song of praise and adoration of your greatness and your majesty and of your love and kindness and mercy toward us. God, we just pray that today this will be a day of commitment on the part of every person that is present. Father, we pray for law enforcement. We pray for our military. We pray for those who protect our freedoms, those who protect our lives and protect our property. And God, we pray for soundness of mind in this nation on matters of decency and law and order. God, just be with us today. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. And Lord, I just pray that we'll come back to some simple, basic fundamentals of the faith and of this nation. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. Give us courage. We continue to pray for the recovery of those who are sick, comfort of those who are bereaved. And more than anything else, we pray for the salvation of those who are lost. They'll wake up. Repent of their sins and come to Jesus before it's eternally too late. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.
Okay, if you would, we'll stand and we'll continue our service. Uh, sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore Shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by we shall be on that beautiful be a little new. Um, this is the first time we've sung it to y'all. Um, but I just want to encourage you guys, whether you know Christ as your Savior or you don't, no matter what you're going through, He's there for you. Um, he's there to lift you up, to pick you up. He paid the price for you. So read the words, listen, 
to the words of this song. shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't kick down. 
Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Your preacher comes to the pulpit equipped with two books, the Bible and a song book. Now you all understand this, the Bible, but the title for the message today comes out of the song book. Out of the song book. I didn't think I was going to be able to find it in one of the books in the church this morning. I was about to hit the panic. I thought, boy, it would be in every, every song book we got here, but I realized it's only in this red back one here. And the title of it is The Old Time Religion. The Old Time Religion. Tis the old time religion, tis the old time religion, tis the old time religion, and it's good enough for me. And I told Brother Keith in the hall back there a while ago, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to preach on the subject. of the, He said, you got a songbook. I said, yeah, I'm going to use it in the message. He said, are you going to have a breakdown, a breakdown and sing it? I said, no. I'm going to stay together and just read it for you. Okay? Tis the old time religion makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Tis the old time religion and it's good enough for me. It's Father's Day. It had saved our fathers. It has saved our fathers. Now, one translation of it is, it was good for our fathers and it's good enough for me. Tis the old time religion. Tis the old time religion. It was good for the prophet Daniel. It was good for the Hebrew children. It was tried in the fiery furnace. It was good for Paul and Silas. It will be do when I am dying and it's good enough for me. It will carry us all to heaven. It will carry us all to heaven. Tis the old time religion, and it's good enough for me. Now match that up with the text, will you? Preacher, all right, get your Bibles and turn me to the book of Jude in the New Testament. Next to the last of the books of the Bible, the little book of Jude in the New Testament. Little book of Jude. Beginning in verse 1 of the chapter, Jude identifies himself, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus and called. That's us. That's us. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith Look at this. For the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men that turned the grace of God, our God, into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I wanted to write to you and tell you that I want to write of the common salvation, however it's needful for me to write to you rather, and to tell you that you need to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Who is this Jew? Who is this Bible author? Who is this person that God has chosen for the next to the last book in the Bible? Such an important book. Well, would it surprise you to believe if I were to tell you that most Bible scholars say this is the Jude that was the half-brother of Jesus? Did you know Jesus came from a large family? His mother was Mary. His stepfather was Joseph. God bless the godly dads. God bless the godly stepdads that are here today. Amen. It's even fun being a granddad. I don't know if you know that. Well, if you're a granddad, you know how much fun it is being a granddad. I've even got some adopted grandkids. I've got one little fella who adopted me for his granddad. Every time I get an opportunity, what a blessing it is to see that little fella. He kept talking about his papa back here in Iowana one night, and somebody said, who is your papa? He said, you know the preacher papa. <laughs> he adopted me. Hey, man, we don't have any papers on it, but it's okay. It's okay. 
Now you said Jesus had brothers, had brothers and half sisters. That's right. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, but he came from a very large family. He was the first. You see, his mother was a virgin Mary whenever she conceived of the Holy Spirit and brought forth our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now on proof of that, and I didn't give it to the guys to put it up on the screen, but on the proof on that, you can go to Mark chapter 6 and you'll find biblical proof that Jesus Christ had brothers and he had sisters. All right? Mark 6, verse 1, And Jesus went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing Jesus were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this, look at this verse, verse 3, Is not this the carpenter's son? The son of Mary. It's not this, the carpenter, the son of Mary. The brother of, number them if you want to, James and Josie and Judah and Simon. Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in our own country and among his own kin and his own house. So Jude, Judah is listed here. James is also listed here as a half-brother of Jesus. If I got my count right, there were five boys in that family. Jesus had four half-brothers and at least two half-sisters. Now there may have been more sisters, but there are two whose names have been given. So I think it'd be safe for us to say that he came from a, quite a large family. Now but back to the book of Jude. Jude identifies himself the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. James wrote the little epistle of James. You say, why did he say I was a half-brother of Jesus? He probably was humbled by that fact. I don't know, but God in His wisdom had it put down like this. To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy and peace and grace unto you and love be multiplied. And then He said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. How old is this church? When was it established? 1880. This congregation which you are a part of and your family is a part of was established in 1880. Guys, can you imagine what it was like to have a family? In 1880. It was a different world. I tried to imagine it. Folks lived in log houses. Many had dirt floors. You raised it, you killed it, or you ran it down or else you didn't eat. Most families had a milk cow. Some had chickens. Some might have had pigs. They had a mule or a workhorse. They ate quail and squirrels and rabbit and anything else they could find to exist. It was a different world being a dad in the 1880s. I don't remember that. I don't remember that. But they were our spiritual forefathers. That's before our day. Brother Henry Newman came into this community. How he got here, I don't know. I do know what he did. They put up a brush harbor down by the spring below this log schoolhouse and had a protracted meeting. That's what they called them back in those days. They had a meeting, and out of that meeting, 64 people either had gotten saved somewhere else and moved here, and it probably wasn't a very big community, but 64 people came and united together to form in 1880, in September of 1880, 
Corinth Baptist Church, they had the old time religion or we wouldn't be here today. Can I get an amen? amen? I tell you something about the old time religion that I do remember. I remember my childhood. The first time I came to Corinth Baptist Church, it reminded me of the church I grew up in, Flatwoods Baptist Church, just across the line, past the north end of Decatur County and barely in Benton County. I remember those times as a child when we walked barefooted to, to church about a, I don't know, probably a mile down a dirt road. We walked to church. I can remember those revival meetings, those protracted meetings when we walked up on the church ground. The men would go on one side of the church house and pray and the women would go on the other side of the church house and they would be gathered underneath the trees and before the service ever started or he ever went in the house, preparation through prayer was made for an old-time religion and a powerful service. And they were singing and they were shouting and they were praising the name of the Lord. Now there's a group of men on the outside that sometimes they would come in. Most of the time they didn't come in. And there were times when the preachers would go to the windows and he'd preach to them out the window or go to the front porch and preach to them out on the front porch and on occasion some of them got saved and moved on in the house. You could generally tell the saved ones were in the house and the lost ones were outside. That's kind of how you identified it. It's a different world. Who would ever thought in the Baptist church that we'd have some guys who didn't get to come into the sanctuary for the worship service? You know why? Because they had to protect the rest of us. Boy, times have changed. Boy, times have changed. Now you say, preacher, do you want to go back to the church of 1880? And the farming of 1880 or even the days of your childhood, is that what you want to go back to in order to have the old time religion? No, that's not what I'm contending for. But this I do contend for, faith of our fathers, living faith. We would be true to thee till death. We need a return to the faith of our fathers. There's a spiritual drought in our land. Millions have lost. They ignore the church and God has no place in their lives. Other millions have their names on church books, but they seldom, if ever, attend or support the church. Judith Bonish. Earnestly contend, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I want to write about salvation. It's a common salvation. It's the same message of God's redeeming love. Peter preached it on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 got saved. Stephen proclaimed it. It cost him his life. Paul preached it before kings and jailers. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the grace of Christ, the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. What was the basis of the old-time religion? They had some basic beliefs. The beliefs and the benefits of the old-time religion, what are they? It was founded upon the greatness of God. One of the principles upon which this nation was founded, the greatness and the sovereignty of Almighty God. We've got too big for our britches in this generation. We have run off and left God. Now let's go back to something I said a while ago about the 1880 generation of folks. Even the generation of people of my childhood, let's go back to see something about those days. Guess what they depended on? To get by, to sustain them in life. In good times and in bad times, the mercy and the grace and the abundance of Almighty God. It's raining today. We take rain for granted. 
they didn't. You know why? Because their crops depended on it. Their families depended on it. Their gardens depended upon the rain. And if God didn't bless them with an abundance of rain, their food was scarce. I'm amazed in the crisis that we've just been through. There has come a familiar phrase, a phrase in the United States of America, government bail out. Am I right on that? We no longer depend upon family farms to feed our families and gardens to feed our family. We depend upon the grocery stores and corporate America to feed us. Am I right in that? Am I right in that? David said in the Old Testament, I have been young and I'm now old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging bread. The old-time religion was practiced by old-time folks that depended upon the very mercy of God through the weather. And good, bad, or good days or bad days to sustain them and their families and their lives. The greatness of God. Not what I have done. I, 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 I. We hear it all the time. It seems to be our national theme now. I love our president. I pray for him every day, but he's got an eye problem. I, 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 I. The old time religion is based not upon the not only upon the greatness of God, but on Jesus as a personal Savior. He was prophesied of old, born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, performed mighty miracles, died on the cross, the third day arose again from the dead, ascended back to the heavenly Father, intercedes for us on a daily basis, and is coming again. They believed it. They expected it. Those generations died in anticipation of the Lord's imminent personal return. What is your testimony about God's grace in your own personal lives? How many of you can remember when they were shouting, going, I'm talking about sure enough shouting, running around the church house days at Corinth. Hold your hand if you remember that. Several of us. In fact, we had one lady one time that was shouting and went over to Brother Obi Renfro and fell over in his arms and the Lord called her home. Now, I don't recommend you die in church. It caused too much excitement. But I don't think her shouting caused that, but I can't think of a better way to leave out of this old world than to be in church and just shout your way right into glory. Amen? And we got more to shout about than anybody in the world. Right? W.A. Crystal, pastor, First Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas. I loved it. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But boy, he had some stories about Texas. He told about this old boy that was traveling with his horse through his town. And he saw a church house and it was Sunday. And so he, he hadn't been saved too long, but he had got religion. So he decided he'd go to church that morning. And he went to church and the preacher was up there rather quiet and subdued, subdued. And anyway, he said something about Jesus, and he couldn't help it. He yelled, Amen! Woo! The preacher lost his place. And when he finally got his place back, uh, he started in again. And before long, he had said something else about Jesus. And the old cowboy got up, and he said, Glory to God, Jesus! And then he realized there was somebody tugging on him. It was the usher. Said, you done made our preacher lose his place twice. We don't have that kind of stuff going on around here. He said, but I got religion. He said, you may have, but you didn't get it here. <laughs> I want to tell you, you can get it here. Amen? You can get it at Corey. <laughs> Amen? If you come looking for it, you can find it. I'll tell you why. Because Jesus is here. 
And we can not only have church in the building, we can have church out of the building, we can have church in the parking lot. We had about 30-something youths last Wednesday evening back there on the back side of the parking lot having a tailgate party with their Bibles on Wednesday evening. And you could just see Jesus all in the middle of it. Right? And I looked up, and here was the kids, and they were in that fenced-in area back here, the water kids. And they were trying to take turns coming and going. They were trying to be safe. We try to be safe around here. They were trying to be safe, so they were in there having a big time. And we got a church dog. Y'all have met him, Bonnie. Bonnie likes to come to church every Sunday. She's more faithful than some of my members. She's here every time the door opens. Now, we used to have Bonnie and Clyde, but Clyde got to chasing cars and caught one. He ain't around no more. But right in the middle of all that wonderful time the kids were having back there, somebody left the gate open, and here went Bonnie right in the middle of all of it. And after about a dozen kids or more had chased her around and around and around, somebody else opened the gate, and that dog got out of there. It was gone. We have funny car in. It's a great place just to serve the Lord. It involves some emotion. The old-time religion involves some emotion. It involved a belief in heaven and hell, that heaven was at the end of the life for the believer and hell was at the end of the life for the unbeliever. It was that simple. That's what the old-time religion is. It's a simple, basic experience. You may want to ask, do, do you get it here? Yeah, you can get it here, but the main thing is it gets you here. Right? It'll get you. This belief in God, dependence upon God, belief in Jesus, our divine Savior, the Word of God, the Word of God, as the only authority for faith and practice. It'll get right in your heart, friends. Now, what's the benefits? Forgiveness of sins? The old timers like to witness. Many of them were uneducated of a generation or two ago. They were uneducated. But they had a wordless book. I found this out. They had a wordless book. Page one was black representing sin. Page two was red representing the blood of Christ. Page three was white. It pictured the soul that had been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And page four was gold. It represented heaven. Guys, don't tell me you can't witness. They did. They did it. They didn't have an education, but they had a four-page wordless book. Black represented sin. Red represented the blood of Christ. White represented the soul that had been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And gold had represented heaven. Don't tell me there's something complicated about the old-time religion. There is not. It's simple to receive. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can't lead where you won't go. You can't teach what you don't know and you can't go back if you ain't been. There are three things that I've come up with and they're right on target every time. You can't lead where you won't go. Guys, we got a family to believe. Your family needs to be in church every Sunday. They need to be in heaven when it's all over with. Pretty important what we do, right? It's a day of fun, Father's Day, a day of recognition. It's a great day. It's a good day. We've had a good day at Corinth. But it's a serious day. If you don't know Jesus, give your family the best father any person could ever give a family. Give them a Christian dad. Have a Christian home. Join with us in rejoicing in the good old time religion. Amen? Simple enough? Let's pray. God, I pray that in the quietness and the solitude of a Sunday morning service, when we come to recognize the fathers in this congregation, 
God, we're so grateful for those who have paved the way before us, who provided for us a great spiritual heritage. And who are today standing on the balfry of heaven, surrounding us around, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, completely surrounding us, encouraging us on in our race of life. God, if there's anybody here today that's not saved, may this be the day and the time and the hour of salvation. Or God, if there's saved folks here looking for a church home, a place of meaningful fellowship and Christian service, God, may they come and join with us as we reach around the world the good news of Jesus Christ, His love and His free salvation for every man. Take this invitation and move in our hearts and in our lives. May Jesus be honored and glorified in all things. For it's in his name we pray, and amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a good hymn of invitation. God moves upon your heart today. Will you come today? Will you come today? If you're not saved, come give your heart to Jesus. If you've got a prayer that you need to pray, and maybe it's a prayer of commitment. It may be a prayer of concern for somebody else, but there's something God lays on your heart. This altar is open. This invitation is for you, and God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Precious Jesus. Oh, for faith to trust Him more. Sing another verse. Did you hear that? Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. How I trust Him. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I can't think of a more fitting way to close out a Father's Day service of worship. So with that, you're dismissed. Five minutes, come back in the sanctuary. We'll have a business meeting for those of you who want to stay, okay?